day all. My name is Munya E.M. from Metlebeck Campus. Today we'll be looking at Industrial Electronics Entry, Chapter 1, Direct Current Theory. In Chapter 1, we're going to use Kirchhoff's Laws to solve unknown currents. We're going to use Kirchhoff's Laws to create loops. Remember in N2, we were using Ohm's law to solve series and parallel circuit. So now in N3, we're going to use Kirchhoff's law to create loops and to solve unknown currents. We have Kirchhoff's current law and again we have voltage law. Kirchhoff's current law, which is first law, and second law which is voltage law so for Kirchhoff's current law is stated that the total current flowing towards a junction is equal to the total current moving away from a junction what they mean is this is a junction when you check the currents i5 i1 i2 they are flowing towards the junction and then i3 and i4 they are moving away from the junction and then they say in kishore's current law it states that the total current flowing towards the junction is equal to total current moving away from a junction so i1 i2 i mean i1 i5 i2 they are flowing towards the junction i3 and i4 they are moving away from the junction what they mean is i1 plus i2 plus i5 is equal to i3 plus i4 which is kishov's current law again when you check this one Total current flowing towards the junction is equal to the total current moving away from a junction. This is a junction. When you check I1, I2, I3, they are flowing towards the junction. IT is moving away from the junction. So it means I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to IT. So for Kishov's second law, is state that in a closed circuit the total emf is equal to the sum of the potential differences around the loop what they mean is the total emf et is equal to the voltage across r1 plus the voltage across r2 plus the voltage across r3 it's Kishov's second law. This is what they mean. In a closed loop circuit, the total EMF is equal to the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R2 plus voltage across R3. And then to find the voltage across R1, remember in a series circuit, the total current, the current does not change. What it means, it means the current across R1 is the same as the total current and the same as the current across R2 and the same as a current across R3. So, we're going to use Kishov's second law to solve loops. So, to use Kishov's second law to solve loops, when you're going around the loop and then the direction of the current is the same as the direction you are going, then the current is considered positive. Like this one when you're going around the loop when you're going clockwise and then the direction of the current is the same as the direction you are going when you're going clockwise and then the direction of the current is also going clockwise then the current is considered positive like this one when you're going in a clockwise direction and then you see this current is also going clockwise direction so it means the current is going to be positive so it means the current across r1 is also going to be positive 
the current across r2 positive the current across r3 it's also positive this is how you want to create a loop and then again but if the current is flowing in the opposite direction to the way you are going the current is regarded as negative what they mean is <clears throat> When you're going around the loop and then the current is opposing your direction, then it's considered negative. Like this one, when you're going clockwise and then the direction of the, again, the current is going anti-clockwise, then the current is considered negative. So we use Kishov's second law to create a loop so Kishov's second law it says the total emf is equal to the voltage across r1 plus the voltage across r2 plus voltage across r3 and then you know that in order to solve the voltage across r1 is going to be the current times r1 across r2 is going to be the total current times r2 across r3 is going to be the total current times r3 so because the current it's opposing your direction it's going to be negative so also this one is opposing your direction is going to be negative again this one is opposing your direction it's going to be negative so now let's check this circuit we want to use the circuit to create a loop and to solve unknown currents so <clears throat> when you consider loop a b c d e h a so it means you're going to start from a until h ne? and then when you consider this loop you're going to use kishov's second law to create the loop and then when you consider it from a to h is clockwise direction so it means you want to start from a using kishov's second law so when you're starting from a it means it's going to be et and then it's going to be the voltage across r1 use kishov's second law plus the voltage across r2 we only have two resistors from a to h it's only two resistors so to create <coughs> a loop for this one et when you check the emf if the emf is given that the emf let's say is 10 volts and then et is 10 and then the voltage across r1 and then you check the current that flows across r1 it's i1 And then the current that flows across R2 is I2. And then the total EMF of the circuit is 10. And then R1 is given that it's 5. And then R2 is given it's 8 I2. And then we can say this is your equation 1. And then again, when you consider loop C, D, C, D, E, F, G, C. Starting from C, E, T, we use Kishov's second law. It's going to be the voltage across R2 plus the voltage across R3. So we only have two resistors. So it's ET. So the voltage across R2 is the current that flows across R2, which is I2. And then the voltage across R3 is current times I3. And then when you check the direction of the current, the direction of the current is opposing your direction. Remember, you're going clockwise and then this one is going anti-clockwise. It's opposing your direction, then it's going to be negative. Then it's negative R3 times I1 minus I2. So you must always remember 
you must always check the direction of the current so if the direction of the current is opposing your direction then it's negative if it's not opposing your direction it's the same direction then it's positive now the total emf when you check from c d e f g c there's no emf if there's no emf it means the emf is zero and then r2 it's eight and then r3 is 10 and then you multiply then you add like tens negative 10 times i1 is negative 10 i1 negative 10 times minus i2 is plus 10 i2 then you add like terms 8 plus 10 is 18 then it means you have negative 10 i1 plus 18 i2 then you can simply say when you take this one it's going to be to your left hand side is going to be positive and then it means 10 i1 is equals to 18 i2 and then you remember we're looking for unknown currents it means we're solving i1 and i2 so in order to find i1 you can divide by 10 then you have 18 i2 divide by 10 which is 1.8 i2 and then you can say this is the equation 2 and then after finding equation 2 in order to solve i1 and i2 you use any simultaneous equation that you understand is either you use elimination method or you use substitution method you'll find the same answer it's up to you any simultaneous equation that you understand i1 and i2 is the same as solving x and y is the same thing and then again let's do the next example when you check this one if you consider loop <coughs> let's say loop a f e d a ne? starting from a when you create a loop starting from a when you create a loop when you check your et it's gonna be the voltage across r2 plus the voltage across r5 so in order to find the voltage across r2 it's gonna be a current times r2 so the current that flows across r2 this one is going in this direction a f e d a so it means e t this one is going is the same direction it's also going anti-clockwise it's also anti-clockwise so it means e t it's gonna be i1 times i2 times r2 Remember, in a zero circuit, the current does not change. When you check these two, they are connected in series. For a zero circuit, the current does not change. So it means the current across R5, it's also I1 minus I2 because they are connected in series. So you also have plus R5 times I1 minus I2. And then for R1, when you check the current is the same it's also anti-clockwise so it's gonna be plus i1 times r1 and then the total emf of the circuit let's just say is 12 then you have 12 it's r2 your r2 is 5 times i1 minus i2 plus your r5 is 10 i1 minus i2 your r1 is 10 times i1 
then we add like terms we have 5i1 minus 5i2 plus 10i1 minus 10i2 plus 10i1 then we add like terms it means we add 5 plus 10 plus 10 then you will have 25 i1 minus 15 i2 you can say this is equation one and then again for loop choose any loop you'll find the same answer unless if they give you a loop and then for loop let's say loop a f E, D, C, B, A. So starting from A, it, it's I1 minus I2 times R2 plus zero second, the current does not change, plus I1 minus I2, R5. These two, when you check these two, they are connected in series. For a series circuit, you must remember that for a series circuit, the current does not change. So it means the current across R4 is also I2. And then going anti-clockwise, when you check I2, it's opposing your direction. So it means it's going to be negative. So we have minus I2 times R4 minus i2 times r3 and then your et when you check starting from a until a there's no emf so it means the emf is gonna be zero then you'll have zero your r2 it's five i1 minus i2 your r5 is 10 i1 minus i2 your r4 is five i2 your r3 is 10 i2 then we add like terms it's five i1 minus five i2 plus 10 i1 minus 10 i2 negative 5 i2 minus 10 i2 then we add like terms we will add 5 plus 10 it's 15 i1 and then we add negative 5 minus 10 is negative 15 minus 5 is negative 20 minus 10 is minus 30 i2 this is equation two and then you use after creating loop after creating the loops after solving the equations you use any simultaneous equation to solve i1 and i2 is either you use elimination or substitution you'll get the same answer mm -hmm.